Every day, new allegations come out around some of the biggest names in Hollywood as well as in media. Harvey Weinstein uh, kicked this thing off uh, where you've had multiple women accusing him of sexual harassment and rape. Kevin Spacey uh, had eight new allegations on yesterday, including one from a 15-year-old uh, boy. You also have James Toback, a director in Hollywood, L.A. Times in a story where more than 200 women have accused him of sexual harassment. Mark Halperin, a uh, po political journalist, also hit with major charges. Three women have come forward saying Dustin Hoffman has also uh, sexual harassed them. You have uh, Jeremy Piven, who is denying sexual harassment allegations. Same thing with Ben Affleck. And go down the line. We've seen this in politics. We've seen this in media, in Hollywood. You see talent agencies firing folks left and right. In fact, the largest country music um, uh, publicist, uh, they have basically shut that firm down, renamed the firm. He's been fired by a number of some of the top artists in country music. Has America finally reached a zenith in saying enough is enough when it comes to sexual harassment? Joining us right now is Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence of Michigan, who also wants to do more when it comes to this issue. Congresswoman, uh, what are you looking to propose? Because what we're seeing is that uh, folks are saying enough is enough. Uh, numerous women, and in some cases, men are now coming forward, even with non-disclosure agreements, saying they want to uh, tell those stories, and they've been using, of course, the hashtag Me Too. Hmm. You know, it's interesting. We have seen this high-profile uh, group of people come forward talking about sexual harassment from very high fo profile people where society has known for a number of years the little the little person who goes to work every day and their life depends on their job being in an environment of sexual harassment on the hill this is where my voice comes in on the hill we have a mandatory ethics training we have mandatory cybersecurity but sexual harassment was optional. And we know for a fact that how do you set the environment of zero tolerance? How do you set the bar to say that we're going to hold you accountable is that you have to have on record and you have to have documentation that you have explained, trained, and you can hold them accountable. So what I'm doing is saying instead of optional, the law will be very clear that if you are an employee of the Hill, you will get sexual harassment training. I want to say for the record, I was an EO investigator prior to coming to Congress, and I have investigated complaints of sexual harassment. I want to be very clear, it's not about a man against a woman. Woman. It's about power in the work environment where there's quick quo pro, there's a, the hostile work environment where so many uh, men don't get that if I come to work, I should not have to look at nude pictures. I don't have to listen to you describing a woman's body. I don't have to hear you making comments. I'm here to work and have a job, and the environment should be one that's conducive for work and not one of sexual harassment. Um, is Congress, I, I've seen the various stories, is Congress exempted? from these laws because I've heard from folks working on Capitol Hill that mm -hmm. that's one of the issues in terms of uh, it's a lot more onerous to actually uh, report somebody. Mm -hmm. It is, they are not exempt, but again, I was a uh, investigator and I had mandated time frames that I had to respond to uh, a complainant. When someone says, I feel I've been sexually harassed, the clock starts ticking the minute that person filed and I had 30 days to meet with that person to have consultation and then after that person has a consultation the clock starts ticking again and I had to meet those timelines but in Congress they have what they call a cooling off period what what is there to cool off from if you've been sexually harassed or feel that you have you have the right to have someone to in a timely and professional way respond to your allegations mm -hmm. so it is um, there is some very concerning uh, steps in the process in Congress, but no one is exempt. No, we have the right, there's an Office of Compliance to file a complaint if you feel that you have been uh, a victim of sexual harassment to receive consultation and there is accountability. There has been settlements and payments that have been made as a result of these complaints. Well, should they be public? In terms of if someone is making an allegation against the member of Congress, 
Actually, uh, do, do, do me a favor. I'm going to answer. I, I want you to answer that question. Yes. Uh, on the flip side, I got to go to commercial break. I want you to answer that question. Welcome back. We're talking with Congresswoman uh, Brenda Lawrence about the issue of sexual harassment. Congresswoman, uh, when you say these settlements are being paid, who pays those settlements? Taxpayers? The, yes, it's the Department mm -hmm. of Treasury when there's a payout uh, for an allegation of workplace. We have been struggling to get the amount of that that money that's being paid out that's directly related to sexual harassment. And your question was, should so, that so, be revealed? So if, so if, right, so if, if the American taxpayer is funding these mm -hmm. sexual harassment claims, should they not be made public and who is responsible for it? In the EO system, it is a requirement. Once there is a settlement, it becomes public. For a number of reasons, there's a certain amount of privacy when you're going through the process of sexual harassment because you do not want to reveal certain things to protect the Got complainant. It. But once that is settled and there has been a finding, because you can't pay a claim unless there has been a finding of sexual harassment, I do believe it should be public. Uh, Amber, we are seeing, again, we talk about power. We are seeing uh, lots of women come forward, but we're seeing men as well uh, talk about sexual harassment. Uh, again, I mean, it's, you know, this is exploding all across Hollywood, all across media and other sectors as well. And I'm sure the music industry and Wall Street are shaking their boots saying, are they coming for us next? Yeah, I think we're in a... Um, for better or for worse, we're in a very powerful and exciting time for standing up against sexual assault, um, sexual harassment, and rape in this country. Um, what we know is <laughs> wars as well as the pillaging of our actual bodies, our bodily autonomy has been a function of government for a long time. Um, rape and sexual assault is as old as the birth of Jesus, you know, it's um, ingrained in our society. And until we face it front on, until we start to have these conversations about consent for men, women, and gender um, non-binary folks, we're not going to get any ground um, leeway on this. We have a president who currently has 16 women who have said that he has sexually harassed them, not before he ran for president, but during the campaign. And the Got White it. House official statement is that they are liars. So until we start to deal with that, we have the trainings as well as open spaces for people to come and be able to openly right. say they have been sexually harassed, that is going to be a part of our revolution. That will set the mark of whether or not um, we are got actually it. resisting. The Me Too. Cleo, I got about 30 seconds. Go. I think that at some point we need to define what sexual harassment is and take it out of the abstract because sexual harassment or sexual coercion is such a normal part of this culture. I mean, just mentioned Donald Trump who was grabbing, talking about grabbing vaginas mm -hmm. and he's the president and half his supporters were women in terms of the, the voting public. So I think as a result of these contradictions and these confusing messages, at this point we have to right. stop using one-liners and break there, down what sexual harassment confusion. is. Uh, uh, Brandon, 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 real quick, Brandon, very quick. It's not. Yes. It's not oh, I was going to say. Brandon, very quick. I agree with your point about this. this uh, every corner of society you keep talking about Trump now twice. You know, this is not, you know, the first uh, presidential candidate. We have Bill Clinton. We have JFK. This is the issue that crosses party lines, crosses uh, profession and all that needs to be addressed. Congress Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence, I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so very much. We have a lot of work to do. Our Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. No. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.